A lot of women present to our clinic describing that their headaches and migraines get worse around the time of their period. But what actually is it that causes this spike in their headaches and migraines and what can you do about it? Hi, I'm Dr. Katie and I'm an osteopath here at Melbourne Headache Solutions and today I'm here to talk to you about hormonal imbalances and how they can be affecting your headaches and migraines. So your hormones can affect you in two ways. Your first one being that hormones can act like a trigger, just like red wine, cheese and chocolate can affect certain people. This means that every time your period comes around, your hormones will set off a headache or a migraine. If the cause of your headaches and migraine is this treated, however, these hormones can no longer act as a trigger, causing you these attacks. In this instance, your neck is most likely the problem and needs to be treated, which is what we do here in the clinic. And the second way that your hormones can contribute to your pain is through a hormonal imbalance which keeps your system sensitized and contributes to your headaches and migraines. The major female sex hormones are estrogen and progesterone. It's a sudden change in estrogen that's associated with headaches and migraines when you have a hormonally related headache or a migraine. This means that you're more likely to notice a spike in headaches and migraines within the five days of menstruation. Some common signs of sim and symptoms of a sex hormone imbalance can include excessive weight gain or difficulty losing weight, a decreased sex drive, increased acne around menstruation, hot flushes or regular or heavy periods, digestive issues including constipation, breast tenderness and mood swings. So hormonal imbalances can arise around puberty, pregnancy, breastfeeding or menopause due to the hormonal changes that the body goes through during these significant life events. Hormonal imbalances are also very commonly associated with polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS for short. So other lifestyle factors that can contribute to a hormonal imbalance include excessive phytoestrogen consumption, being overweight and eating lots of processed foods. So what can you do to help yourself if you think you've got a hormonal imbalance? Getting enough sleep is very important. So sleep helps your body heal from the stresses of the day that precedes it. Uh, not getting enough sleep leaves your body in this constant state of damage, which places a large amount of strain within your body. Decreasing alcohol content can also be beneficial. So alcohol can cause a rise in estrogen levels as the liver is supposed to detox the alcohol and the estrogen at the same time. But if the liver is preoccupied detoxing all the alcohol, then there's nothing to do with estrogen and then it builds up, which can cause uh, heavier and longer periods, breast pain and an increase in your headaches and migraines. Keeping track of the food that you put into your body can also be very handy. So lots of foods that we eat contain high levels of phytoestrogens, which are a variant of estrogen that's not made by the body. Phytoestrogen consumption should be moderated in relation to whether you have higher or lower levels of estrogen. And supplementation can also be of a massive benefit. So there's lots of great supplements on the market at the moment that can help manage um, fluctuations of hormones. Naturopaths are also a great resource to help manage these hormonal imbalances. And I highly recommend discussing supplementation with them if you think that you have a hormonal imbalance. So those are some quick and easy things that you can try at home and are likely to help with mild to moderate symptoms of a hormonal imbalance. Naturopaths and functional medicine practitioners can also be of a massive benefit uh, in managing hormonal imbalances. If you're experiencing more severe symptoms of a hormonal imbalance, however, it's recommended that you have a checkup with your doctor just to make sure that there's no underlying cause for this imbalance. If you think your hormones may be contributing to your headaches and migraines, or if you're unsure about the cause, fill out our questionnaire, the links above, so that we can help identify what's causing your pain and help you find a better path to managing your headaches and migraines. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please ask them below and I'll get back to you. Thanks for listening.